take a, a quick swig of a drink. <clears throat> it didn't take too long. Let's get started. Welcome, everyone, back to Friday Night Fights. I am your general, Friday Night Fights general manager and commentator, Trey. And we are going to bit boppity scoop right into the dupe. Let's uh, let's do let's do a twoo, you know? Why not? Let's let's say mm, live, and everyone's gonna think that means Five Nights at Freddy's, but jokes on them, it means Friday Night Fights, and they are gonna be sorely disappointed. <coughs> also, also. Also, I have forgotten to, uh, edit the thing, the, the stream title, uh, but nonetheless, we are going to open up with a little bit of a promo with the woman that I can now announce as the number one contender to Naomi's Broken Hearts Championship after defeating Ronda Rousey last week. It is going to be Jacqueline. Jacqueline is going to face Naomi in a thrilling old oh boy from the Force Freddy. Now, I mean, you joke. Nightmare Freddy is on the show. He was the longest reigning recognized character champion ever. Is that right? 24 weeks as recognized character champion. Went. 11 and 0, almost tied Freddy Krueger's undefeated record until I fucking screwed him out of the title at Extreme Rules because he's a piece of shit who cost me the draft. But either way, Jacqueline will face Naomi for the Broken Hearts Championship at TLC coming up in a chairs match. That's right. These ladies are going to have to make each other sit down and shut up. They want to prove that they are the best in the FNF women's division. Jacqueline, what you got to say? You guys are in for something special tonight because you're about to bear witness to something monumental, something that will shake the foundation of the women's division to its core. So allow me to be the one to deliver the news. Oh shit, I already did. Don't tell her. I've had something on my mind for a while now, and it's about time I speak up. I don't like what's been going on around here in the women's division, and I'm tired of sitting on the sidelines and not doing anything about it. I'm taking matters into my own hands, and it starts tonight. I'm not an aspiring reality show contestant. I'm not here to figure out what I'm going to do after WWE. I'm here for WWE, to be in WWE, and to become your champion. And look, unlike some other people around here, I'm not going to sit back and wait for my opportunities to come. I'm going to create my own. So from here on out, anyone on the roster who wants to test me, come on, test me. Because I've been ready for you my entire life. Thank you all for being behind me. Thank you all for your support. I want you all to know that without you, I'd never have the courage to fight for my dreams. And I will do you all proud. At T L C Be sure to tune into TLC, aka the Demolition Derby of WWE. Tune into TLC, aka the TLC of WWE. My acronyms. Now we're gonna jump into our first match of the evening. It's it's an exciting one. Storm Axe, of course, won that Raise the Stakes Battle Royale to earn a shot at every show leading up to uh, TLC and including TLC. And tonight he is going to face a debuting superstar in Godzilla. Now Godzilla, he went, say, middle round of the draft. Haven't really used him yet, but we're going to start using him here. This could be Snorlax's biggest opponent yet. 
Maybe literally, definitely metaphorically in terms of, uh, you know, how strong they are. In size, I think it's pretty close between him and Andre. Stay tuned for the big boy belt division. Brought to you by Totino's Pizza Rolls. Phone, you looking all right? Phone's fine. Hmm, his big head looks like Zilla, but his body. He's got the head of a Zilla and the body of a Godzilla. Some would call him Gozel. Dude, this little fucking sneaky ass fingers, though. You don't want to get diddled by those things. That's what I'm telling you. This Godzilla now gets Snorlax up to his feet. Looking for a big win his debut. Oh my god. Deadlift power pump. That's going to do some damage to the back of Snorlax. Who just barely avoids the stop. Oh my god. Not again. Oh my god. The strength of Godzilla to pick Snorlax up like that. And just repeatedly power bomb him. As hard as he can, headbutt from Godzilla. Oh, big knee strike. Right hook. Snorlax has barely gotten any offense in this match. Almost none at all. As Godzilla gets Snorlax up. Oh my god! His energy laser into a choke bomb! It's, a, it's Zilla bomb time now. Snorlax kicking out at two. After that nuclear beam shot into the face of Snorlax, who's in desperate trouble, hasn't had any offense in. Sending him outside, punching him down. Snorlax kind of blends him with those mats. Is Godzilla slowly getting Snorlax up? No, Snorlax able to fight back. This could be his chance to turn things around. Belly to belly suplex on the outside. Oh my god, I can see Brock Lesnar kid in the crowd. Top hard cam. Big suplex to Godzilla. This could be Snorlax's chance to turn things around. Did it not update the name or is that just me? No, it definitely didn't update the name. Motherfucking piece of shit. Twitch. Don't mind me. I just can't talk about the match. Because I am busy trying to update my shit. Updating. There we go. And Snorlax gets him up to his feet. I might sneeze, but here comes a rollout. Turning Godzilla inside out. Snorlax immediately into the taunt. Godzilla trying to crawl to his feet. But Snorlax stomps on his back. Oh, ninja roll by Godzilla into an arm drag. It's a back and forth contest now. And Snorlax gets him up. Nice suplex there to Godzilla. And a sit out blockbuster. Snorlax could walk away with the victory here. Big right hook. Win a second rollout. Doing as much damage to Godzilla as he can. We all know what comes next. Picks him up. Power bomb into the pin. One. Two. Godzilla escapes. But right into the Boston Crab. Is Godzilla going to tap? Or can he make it to the ropes? Have those two rollouts damaged his spine enough for him to give up to this Boston Crab? No Snorlax lets him go. Perhaps to do even more damage to him. Knee smash. Godzilla days now wasn't expecting this kind of fight back this late in the match. Out of nowhere, DDT, good lord. And Godzilla throws his fist in the air in defiance. This is one for the giant monsters. Irish whipping him into the corner now. Better be ready. Oh, clothesline out of the corner, sending Snorlax. Oh, into another clothesline. And a sidewalk slam. The ZDT. Oh no. Oh no, nuclear breath. Followed up by a backbreaker leg sweep. Snorlax in serious trouble here. 
Godzilla throwing his fist up again. You can see the green all over Snorlax. It's not looking good for him here. He could be irradiated. Oh my god, in the STO reversal by Snorlax. Big leg drop. Could take the head off of Godzilla. Right there. Has him up. A third rollout. Oh my god, sent his neck into the ropes on that one. This could be it for Godzilla. As Snorlax slowly gets him to his feet, looking for the right opportunity to strike. Oh, but Godzilla fighting back now. Oh, gets caught with a roundhouse kick to the side. Uppercut by Godzilla. Oh no, Snorlax needs to look out as he's about to get grabbed for the A-bomb. And Snor oh, he almost took the ref out with Snorlax there. He was just too big. One, two... Oh, and Snorlax kicks out. What a match here. These clash of monsters. These titans going at it in the ring. Snorlax using his claws to rake the face of Snorlax. Now punching him in the back of the head. Atomic breath. Rolling him over for the neck breaker. I don't know how Snorlax is still hanging on at this point. 2.99999. Snorlax has him up. Irish whipping Godzilla into the turnbuckle. The crowd getting hyped. Oh no, Snorlax sending him to the top rope. This can't be good. No, Godzilla fighting back. Godzilla on the top rope. Oh my god, into a power slam. Oh my god, into a pin. One, two. Th oh, and Godzilla kicks out. The crowd going absolutely nuts for this match. Big right hook to Snorlax. Roundhouse kick to the side. Another right hook. Godzilla into the atom bomb. Sent him down through all the ropes. But Godzilla out of breath. Can't capitalize. He had to take a breather. That might have cost him the victory here. One. Two. Three. No, it was still enough. The atom bomb through the ropes knocked Snorlax completely unconscious. As we see the replays of this incredible match here tonight. What a fucking... That might be match of the night right there. That could even be a match of the year contender. A sleeper match for sure. And what a debut victory for Godzilla who may have just had the biggest impact of any debuting superstar here on Friday Night Fights. But nothing can be taken away from Snorlax in that incredible contest. The Yoshi Lax, the Yoshi Snore. Mmm, <coughs> good crunch, Dunker. Good crunch indeed. As we move on to our next match, which I actually... Don't remember what it is. Ah, uh, it's not a match. It's Primo Cologne. One of the uh, number one contenders. To the tag team championships, they will be facing the Orphan Cripplers at TLC in a ladder match. So they don't even have to pin the Orphan Cripplers. They just have to climb a ladder quickly and get the belts. That could definitely benefit the Colognes. At TLC. Go. Big burp. We're just, we're just waiting. We're just waiting for the clones and dunks. How are you doing? He's just eating the good crunch. Having a good time. Well, let's see what Primo Cologne has to say. He really loved that mic. Surprise competitor. Oh, he did, almost fucking jabbed the camera, man. That's not cool. The Colognes. Actually, 3 and 0. In a. Uh, tag team competition. Well, let's see. How they do here tonight. Well, they're not 
really having a match, are they? They're just kind of promo. So their promo goes, It's me! The one half of you want to be like... Wait, the one half of you want to be like, and the other half want to be with! Well, I don't have time to titulate or inspire you, because there's some important business that I need to address. It's time for a primo promo. I suppose I came out here to make a name for myself, didn't I? Yeah, we're doing this. We're doing this, and there's no avoiding it. So we might as well just get out, get on with it. I'm not out here trying to make a name for myself. I have a name already. So Venom, come on out here, and you will know my name. Yo, he cologne. Fear make no sound, and he goes away. Primo, I think mad that people often confuse the colognes, not able to tell which is which. And he's going to teach Venom that he is Primo Cologne. Cutting his Primo promo out here tonight. Isn't that right, LaDonker? Venom taking his good sweet time going out to the ring. Big smooch for Donks. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Oh, Venom has finally made it to the ring. He's just, he's just shaking his head in disappointment. Sorry to interrupt your little sing-along with the WWE Universe, but I actually have grown-up things to discuss. Get the hell out of my arena right now! You hear me, you son of a bitch? If you know what's good for you, for the WWE, for the WWE Universe, you'll leave right now! Sorry, did you say something? I couldn't hear you because insects don't have vocal cords. Now why don't you skedaddle, because I value these boots in this ring too much to sully them by squishing you. What makes you think that you deserve to be out here sharing the same air that I breathe? You can't seriously believe that you're at or even near my level, can you? I should beat the hell out of you for your arrogance alone. It hurts, don't it, when you stare into the mirror and realize you're not the man you wish you were? What about when your family makes you realize you just ain't good enough either? Sucks, but I'm a nice guy, and I'm all about chances. So I'm giving you the chance to prove yourself by beating me in a match. Is it Venom challenging Primo Cologne to a match here tonight? All of your talk is just that. Talk. You can't wrestle and everyone here knows it. If you try and prove me wrong, you'll just embarrass yourself. So head back to the playpen, little boy. I feel bad for any fans of yours out there in the WWE Universe. They can see how clearly you're a wimp. I wouldn't want to be your fan anymore after tonight. Everyone here should jump ship and support me. Because the two of us, I'm the, between the two of us, I'm the real superstar here. Just look at me. I'm everything you want. You start popping off shots, you better be ready to receive some return fire. And believe me, I'm going to be bringing the heavy artillery to this one. I don't know, Primo Cologne, he's talking big, but he looks scared shitless to me in front of Venom here. I think we've all learned one thing after, t then after this little discussion. That it's become crystal clear that I am, and will always be, better than you. You can save your breath from here on out, because nothing will change that fact. As for us competing, I have better things to do. Farewell. And Primo, heading out of the ring now. But but apparently, Venom actually offering a second match. Venom offering to face both members of the Colognes here tonight in a one-on-two match. And it looks like Primo's going to actually accept that deal with a nasty smirk on his face. The Colognes believe that together they can take out Venom. I mean, I think it's possible. Two on one always has the advantage. But Venom is a big, bulky boy. So I don't know for sure. Oh, look at this tiny dunk. Tiny dunk, indeed. Tiny dunk, indeed. So Venom takes on Primo into Epico Cologne in this one-on-two tag team handicap match. Now this does count as a tag team match for Primo and Epico. So if Venom wins single-handedly, 
he ends their 3 and 0 win streak or they could boost it to 4 and 0 just by beating Venom here tonight ladies and gentlemen as Epico Cologne starts the match off with a neck breaker to Venom Primo sending in his brother after he talked all kinds of shit on Venom now Epico with the arm drag looking to take it this is could be their chance two on one situation they could cripple Venom before their match at TLC this Sunday big set out blockbuster and that could give them an even better chance of winning those tag titles as Epico Cologne oh my god what a bamboozle by the Colognes Primo pulling the rope out from under him what the fuck is Epico doing what is Epico what the fuck is okay I was I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you I was really hoping he'd do a springboard and clear the entire fucking ring I wanted that to happen so fucking bad Primo or Epico clone would be getting a massive singles push if he fucking springboarded across the entire ring like over it but nonetheless Primo throwing Venom back to the ring as he now fights back against Epico big belly to belly suplex I'm getting Epico back up to his feet Epico reversing sending Venom into the corner monkey flip out of the corner Venom back up oh spring not a springboard off the top rope into a crossbody he's being controlled by cylinder oh no Epico up to the top rope oh my god was that a fucking top rope butt bomb absolutely nuts move by Epico Cologne who hits the drop kick getting Venom up to his feet discus elbow fails as Venom picks Epico Cologne up into a gut buster Venom has him in his sights now big body slam to Epico Cologne who you can already tell starting to feel the pain Irish whipped into the corner Venom coming after him sending him up top this cannot be good this definitely cannot be good for Epico Cologne oh my god super Frankensteiner to Epico as he gets up to his feet oh right hook into a oh my god and there you see the infestation in Epico 1, 2, but Primo able to break it up. Oh my god, he takes out the ref and Primo. This is where the 2-on-1 advantage comes into play, but I don't think Venom cares as he sends Primo into the corner once again. Oh, what a clothesline. Nearly takes Primo's head off, picks him up. He has Primo up now, reversing into the reverse DDT. Primo now escaping the ring. Epico back to his feet. This could be his chance to capitalize. As he drags Venom. Center of the ring. Big stomp to Venom's arm. Epico tags in Primo. Nice chance for a tag team maneuver here. Swift kick. Primo has him up now. Irish whipping Venom into the top rope. Or into the corner. Looking for some revenge as he sends Venom into that steel ring post. Trying to do some real damage before their ladder match at TLC. And Slenderman fighting back. Oh my god. Sending Primo face first into the mat. Primo going to return the favor, however. Going up top. Looking for a big top rope move. Oh, Moats! Oh my god. Big kick. That might have just broken Venom's neck. If they can injure Venom here tonight, they could guarantee themselves those tag team championships this Sunday. Big knee from Venom. Northern Lights suplex. Venom looking very strong here in this match. Rolling Primo. Center of the ring. Slamming his arm down. Now into a big double knee draw. As Primo back up to his feet. Irish whip into the corner. Oh no. That's not somewhere Primo wants to be. We saw this to Epico. Super Frankensteiner. No. He's, gonna, he's looking for the infestation. 
on Primo as well. And here it is, an Epico caught trying to enter the ring, the ref having none of it. Venom now going for the pin. One, two, and Epico breaks it up. And he might want to get out of there quick before Venom gets him up for the stun gun off the top rope. Both colognes laying flattened out by Venom. Here comes Epico trying to stop him. He, he misses his punch though like a complete moron as Venom now sends him into the corner. Oh no. What is Venom planning against Epico? Here has him in the tree of whoa. Primo saving his partner. Sending Venom into the corner now. Monkey flip to Venom. Now up top for the crossbody once again. This time into the pin. Ref wasn't prepared for it. One. Oh, and a kick out at one from Venom. As Epico able to escape the ring. Elbow drop by Primo. Could be setting Venom up here now. For the top rope flying headbutt. But Primo exhausted. This is a massacre. Send help. But it's a massacre on which side? As Primo sends Venom into the corner. Looking for their tag team maneuver here probably. Maybe not. Oh! High and low from the Colognes. Into the pin. One. Two. Oh, Venom kicking out before the three count. Epico Cologne missing a drop kick as Venom's ready. Back up to his feet. Gets Epico up. Epico reversing. Jumping DDT to Venom. <coughs> Gets him back up once again. Ducks under from behind. Oh my god. What a giant back body suplex into a German. Epico's patented Chimera Plex. That was their finisher. Ripped them. But I think Epico might be able to do it on his own here. Sending him into the corner. This could be their chance. Tag made to Primo. They're going to go for it once again. Primo. Epico. High and low. Right into the pin there on Venom. One. Two. Oh my god. Venom kicks out yet again. Venom has kicked out at two high and lows. Now fighting back, kicking Primo in the gut. Putting him down, what the fuck? Oh, stomp puller! Diagonal two, that's gonna super hyper extend the leg of Primo here. Who rakes the eyes of Venom, he has the cheat in a two-on-one situation. That's just horrible. That's just like, disappointing to see number one contenders have to stoop that low when they already have such an advantage. Not high or low enough. Venom now furious. He's pissed off. He's just pummeling Primo. Fights back. Right hook. And goes for Hurricane Rana and connects it. I thought Venom was going to catch him with a powerbomb for a second. Primo on the outside. Springboard Centon. As he now gets Venom back up to his feet. Irish Whip into the other corner here. Primo could be plotting something big. Kick to the gut. What the fuck is Primo doing? Oh, it's the headbutt from the second rope. In the appendix, off the pin. One, two. Oh my god. Oh, Venom kicks out. I thought Primo had it. The crowd going wild. Stiff kick. Venom furious. He's raging up. Backbreaker to Primo Cologne. As Venom now getting him up. Jawbreaker. Primo trying to prevent Venom from making a comeback. Running Bulldog. And you can tell Primo feeling the effects of that backbreaker. Getting him up to his feet now. Big right hook. Oh, backstabber! Oh, but he hurt his knee. Primo can't make the pin on Venom. He crawls over. Can he just get on to Venom to make the pin? There it is. One. Two. Oh, and Venom still kicks out. It took Primo too long to cover after the backstabber. Primo going to the top rope for the big top rope super butt bomb. Another stomp to Venom. 
getting him up to his feet. Irish whip into the corner. We all know what's coming next. No, Venom reversing with the jawbreaker. Venom knew it was coming next. Picks Primo up. Power bomb. One. Two. No, into a Boston Crab. Epico wasn't ready for the Boston Crab. Will Primo tap out to the Boston Crab? Epico can't break it up. The ref already saw him into the ring. The only one who's winning this is Slender Man. As Venom lets him out of the Boston Crab. Didn't want to risk Epico taking any chances to run in. Big leg drop. The only, yeah, only one winning is Slender Man. As Venom now drops a knee to the back of Primo's head. Slender, yeah. The Cologne's going through all of this to try and weaken Venom for TLC. They're weakening themselves here in this match. Venom's taking them both on. Slenderman's going to be a fresh, rested man. Come the pay-per-view. Rolling Centon from the second rope. Running the ropes now into a big elbow drop. How did he not tap? Primo's holding You can see him holding his spine. He's definitely injured, though. Irish whip Venom into the corner. Oh, big elbow as Venom now sends Epico into the corner. And I think we all know what to expect here. So does Epico as they're fighting back from behind. Massive back body suplex into the German. And for the second time this match, we are going to see a fully performed Chimeraplex to Venom. But can he pin off that Chimeraplex? He's not going to. He knows it's going to take more. As he slowly gets Venom. Oh, right hook Venom fighting back. Irish whip now into the corner. Epico in trouble. And Venom places him up top. And I think we can expect the usual from Venom with the Super Frankensteiner. Epico might be concussed here. Into a leg drop just in case it wasn't bad enough. Venom. Saving his strength, not quite putting him away yet. Oh no, he is catching him off guard with the infestation. Is the Chimeraplex what Joe does in game? Yes, I don't think I've ever seen him do it in real life. Is Primo strong enough? Oh, Venom wisely dragging Epico across the ring. Does Primo have enough strength to come break it up? Two! Oh my god! No, that was a three! It was a three count. Oh, I, I don't know. I think it was a three count. No, it wasn't. No, he broke it up at the last millisecond. I had to wait and see. Referee's decision on that. Butterfly. Oh, God. Long blow. Butterfly long blower. Good Lord. What a move by Epico. The epic maneuver. One, two, three. Oh, my God. That was a three count. What a finish! Oh my god, what an ending to the match! Here we see the infestation. There we see the high and low. I don't know which one. I don't know if it were. Hopefully, though, let's see if they replay it or not. We're watching. No, they're not gonna replay it, but the colognes. Venom only lost because he thought he won. I think you're right. Venom celebrated for quite a while there. I think he also thought the ref did a three count. Either way, whether you think it's a screwy finish or not, the Colognes get the win and are now 4-0. Meanwhile, Venom, that goes on his record as a 0-1 as a singles record for Venom. Due to that loss. Absolutely incredible. What a fucking match. These last two matches have been out of control, eh, Dunks? I've already forgotten. Well, if history is any guide, the next match should be just. Oh my god, that was only match number two? Holy shit! We have three more matches. Holy fuck. And if 
I mean, this is about to be the Friday Night Fights of the Year because next up we got Brock Lesnar versus Jack Gallagher. MMA versus MMA. This is this is the this is gonna be better than the fucking pay per view. Holy shit! I gotta blow my nose real quick. The Beast versus the Gentleman. What a good tagline for the match. I know. This was the match that I muttered to myself. This isn't going to show up for those of you watching on YouTube. Uh, but during the stream, I said, that, uh, that, I'm not going to give that match away on free TV. I've decided to give this match away on free TV. And Gallagher gets taken out with an STO. Maybe it's a good thing I gave this match away on free TV. As he slams Gallagher down with a suplex. Brock Lesnar. No, Gallagher fighting back. Jawbreaker to the Beast Incarnate. Looking to end Lesnar's, I assume, undefeated streak. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape of both these boys. This is Jack Gallagher's single debut while Brock Lesnar is 2-0. We don't use Brock Lesnar often. Special attraction here on what's going to be known as the greatest Friday Night Fights of all time. Lesnar mocking out. The crowd hates Lesnar. They absolutely cannot stand him mocking Gallagher in the corner. Big slam to Gallagher. A nice shot right hook. Oh, but Gallagher still looking to fight back. This could be his chance. Clothesline takes the beast down to one knee. Gallagher's opportunity here. Uppercut. Oh, no. Sherman so Oh, Gallagher lands on his knees. Backhand takes Lesnar down. He's got Lesnar up. Crucifix! Lesnar doesn't know what just hit him. As Gallagher, using that technical prowess, the joint manipulation. Look at this maneuver by Jack Gallagher. Oh, and he just tried to break the fingers of the beast. Gallagher now. What the fuck is this? What is this submission maneuver? Oh my god! Lesnar for the biggest problem with Brock is he's slow into the pin one. Oh, and Brock kicks out at one. Of course, he is the Beast Incarnate. But Jack Gallagher, oh, missing the drop kick. No, that could cost him. Goes for the belly to belly. Gallagher reversing STO. Big stomp by Gallagher. Now locking in. Kind of an R-bar esque move. Trying to break his arms. Gallagher. It's Lesnar up to his feet. Goes for the cutter, but Lesnar reverses. And Gallagher, oh, goes for a crossbody. Lesnar still standing. He only clipped him. Right hook. Lesnar's just beating the shit out of him now. No! Jarman throw the ropes! Taking Gallagher to Sue Planks City. No, not the third one. The third one. Oh, no, didn't go through the ropes. Only the first one went through the ropes, but that's still a lot. As he gets Gallagher back up to his feet. Picking him up. What the fuck? Oh my god. Oh my god. F5 taking his feet through the ropes. Insult to injury to Jack. Who kicks out of the F5? And Brock Lesnar. He's, he's feeling zesty. He's getting excited by this fight that Gallagher's putting up as he's just beating Gallagher into the ground now. Using those elbows on the gentleman's head. Gallagher might not know where he is. Double axe handle, which Gallagher rolls out of the way of. All but gets kicked in the gut. Lesnar has him up. What the, No, don't do it, Lesnar. Don't do it. Reverse powerbomb into the turnbuckle. Lesnar now just putting his boot into Gallagher's face. Gallagher exhausted after kicking out of that F5. 
Lesnar's just playing with him now. He's going to punish Jack Gallagher for fighting back. Head scissors on the gentleman. Multiple elbows. Lesnar has him up now. From behind, taking him to suplex. Oh, his head hit the turnbuckle. Taking Gallagher to suplex city. Once again, I think Gallagher's regretting fighting back now. As the Lesnar just slowly getting Jack Gallagher back to his feet. But Gallagher fighting back with what little energy he has left. Headbutt to... Oh my god, the headbutt out of nowhere to Lesnar. Getting him up to his feet. Irish whip into the corner. Gentleman's drop kick Into the pin. One. Two. And oh, Lesnar kicks out at two. Jack Gallagher in disbelief. He almost stole the victory. In El Universe after NXT. Basically, Gallagher drop kick to Lesnar. Another drop kick to Lesnar. Ducks under him. Oh, goes for the crossbody. Lesnar caught him. Backbreaker, no. Gallagher in trouble. Picks him up. Gallagher reversing the F5 into a reverse DDT. Gallagher now stomping on Lesnar's jaw. Gallagher, so much energy le lost. He used everything he could to reverse that F5. Trying to dislocate Lesnar's leg now. Giving him the Charlie horse. Lesnar dodges the kick. Goes for a German. Gallagher reverses. Side Russian leg sweep. What is happening tonight? Oh my god, DLC is cancelled. They can't top this. Headbutt takes Lesnar down. Do it, Jack. Elbow drop. He's got Lesnar up. Lesnar fighting back, though. Close line to Gallagher. Lesnar now slowly getting Gallagher up. Head scissors into the multiple elbows. Oh, Gal that might have just knocked Gallagher out. Gallagher might be in real trouble here now. As Lesnar slowly gets Jack Gallagher. No, he's fighting back. This is it. No, Lesnar has him. Taking him for a stun gun. Oh, and look at the red. Into the pin. One, two, and Gallagher kicks out at two. Lesnar now. Slowly getting Gallagher up and punishing him for doing so. Stomp to the spine of the gentleman. Oh, Gallagher able to avoid the kick. Pushing Lesnar aside, fighting him into the corner. Irish whip into the other corner for the... No. No, I thought he was going to go for the gentleman's drop kick. He's not. I don't know if that's such a good idea. As he, he takes Lesnar to the top rope. What is Gallagher doing up there? No. Super arm drag to Brock Lesnar into the pin. One, two. Th oh, Lesnar kicks out. Gallagher can't believe it. Didn't have enough stamina. You're right. That's probably what happened. But does he now? Gentleman's drop kick into the pin. One, two, three. The boy of the dream has come true. He's done it. The gentleman has slain the beast. That's by far the biggest win of this young man's career. Oh my god, is Lesnar gonna shake his hand? Do it. He's done it. He has Lesnar's respect. The gentleman. The true gentleman. Even Brock Lesnar respects Jack Gallagher now. Oh my god. Holy shit. What the fuck? I can't believe life right now. That is by far the biggest... I'm saying, getting pushed to the moon.
That has got to be the biggest upset. But for real, why is Brock so weak? The gentleman is over as fuck. Oh my god. Gallagher. The first person in 2K18 to defeat Brock Lesnar. What do you mean, why is Brock so weak in this game? He's been killing people left and right. Holy shit. Moving on. A, a kind of a downer now, honestly. We learned last week that not Jack Gallagher, but Sin Cara won the raffle last week to fight for the World Heavyweight Championship against Man Ray at TLC. And so this week he's going to be put to the test as he goes one-on-one -on -one against Dr. Eggman. Oh my god, that was fucking nuts. Jack Gallagher. I, I, Jack Gallagher just guaranteed himself some kind of future opportunity. I, 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 I want to say he deserves a shot at the world title, but hell, maybe the recognized character title is more prestigious at this point. Either way, Jack Gallagher just made the... That was Gallagher's debut, by the way. It was a singles debut. He's part of a fucking tag team with Lex Luger as the Brex Express, which never gets mentioned anymore because the team sucks. But Gallagher's out here beating Brock Lesnar on his own. Either way, let's get into this contest. And of course, those sneaky weasels that make up evil every villain is lemons. They can't just let Eggman have a match against number one contender Sin Cara. They have to be out here at ringside to try and help Dr. Eggman. Sin Cara runs the ropes, bumps into each other. Eggman gets Sin Cara up with the reverse DDT. Sin Cara now, baseball slide drop kick. Looking to do some real damage to one of the underlings of the world champion Man Ray. Sin Cara already going to the top rope. Oh, saw Eggman getting up though. <laughs> Snooping as usual, I see Sin Cara. Oh, pop up power bomb! From Dr. Robot and breaking news after the gentleman's miracle happened. Everyone going home because they want to beat traffic and thought that was the main event. I don't blame them, but we have two more matches here tonight. They got, we got all the evil here on the outside rooting on Dr. Robotnik. And he's going to throw Eggman into him. Oh, Cobra Commander. Wait a minute, you can't interfere with this match. Sin Cara fighting back against Cobra Commander. Hitting Dr. Eggman. Careful not to get a DQ loss for Eggman here. As we see, another weird, like, float, not float over, like a Hurricane Rana into a DDT, a wild maneuver. We still have this match, but we also, in our actual main event, we'll see the recognized character champion go one-on-one -on -one against one of his two opponents at DLC, someone he's never faced before. It's going to be Rick Martell versus Curtis Axel in the main event. I see Cara now thrown into the ropes. Big spinning back fist by Robotnik. Let's uh, what's what's our what's our win loss for all these boys? What's our lad Eggman at? Eggman is 0 and 1. Sin Cara is uh nothing. This is Sin Cara's singles debut. Sin Cara has never had a singles match before now, and his next match is going to be. For the World Heavyweight Championship. That's the magic of raffles for you right there. Sin Cara now. With the Olympic slam to Eggman. What on earth? Megatron now getting up. And interfering with this match. Trying to distract Sin Cara. Giving Eggman a chance to catch his breath. As the back body drop takes Eggman down. Sin Cara... Going up to the top rope. Ref needs to get out of the way. Oh, and a swanton bomb. From Sinkar into the pin. Megatron distracting the referee. Springboard moonsault on the Eggman. Cobra's quite small. Compared to the other two, yeah, honestly. Megatron and Man Ray, they're just really big. 
And Sin Cara now throwing Robotnik into the corner, punching him in the back. Robotnik fighting back now. Snap suplex sends his feet into the turnbuckle there. Was not a pleasant landing for Sin Cara. As Eggman now hits the snapmare into a headlock. Trying to wear down the mass crusader, Sin Cara. For those of you unaware, Spanish for no face. Sin Cara, in fact, does not have a face. Right hook to Eggman. And what? Standing Frankenstein in pin one, two. Oh, and Eggman kicks out. Almost got the victory there. Sin Cara quite tired. It has been mostly Sin Cara for this match. Robotnik had some uh, offense there at the start. But now Sin Cara, you're across the ring, Sin Cara. Oh, my, he would have made it too. But Robotnik was able to get out of the way as he gets him up. Oh, it connects with the DDT to Sin Cara. And I think he just screwed Sin Cara. One, two, no! I didn't even think that was a two count. Is he related to Slender Man? I was thinking about making that joke. As Eggman now taunting in the corner. The crowd going wild, trying to cheer the number one contender on. Float over Hurricane Rana armbar. Is Eggman gonna tap? Will Sin Cara make Robotnik tap out here? Big momentum for Sin Cara heading into TLC. And no. Robotnik hanging on as Sin Cara goes to the top rope. Megatron distracting the referee. As we see the Sin Cara bomb. What the fuck do you call that? It's like it's a swanton bomb. Does Sin Cara have a name for it? One. Two. Oh, Robotnik kicks out. Just enough time was bought by Megatron, distracting the ref. Did the ref get rid of Megatron here? There's two more bad guys to go through. Springboard Moonsault. I thought he was going to go right into the pin. Maybe not. Off the ropes, into a big boy Sinton. Sin Cara now getting hit with a jawbreaker by Eggman. Picks him up. No reverse DDT from the number one contender. And Megatron distracting Sin Cara again, telling him, You can't see me, but Sin Cara can. And it's very distracting. Eggman able to get back to his feet, but not for long. Back body suit just dropped Eggman right on his egg. Is, is Megatron saying a little prayer for Eggman in the corner there? No, he doesn't have a name for it. We're going to have to come up with a name for it. German suplex from Sin Cara. Shades of Brock Lesnar here in this match. Sin Cara getting the crowd hyped up for him, showing him, call it the bomb I know face. Sin Cara up top, looking for his patented maneuver, the car crash! And Megatron up top again, into the pin. The, the ref getting tired of, the ref, get, the, get fucking Megatron out of here. Into the pin. One. No. Sin Cara kicking out again. Sin Cara fighting against all the odds here. Is Megatron getting a weapon? Why is it only Megatron? There's a steel chair in the ring. Hurricane Ron is Eggman on the steel chair. Hit the fucking car crash. God damn it. Sin Cara. That would have been the best. Steel chair in the ring. DDT on the steel chair. And here comes Megatron again. Sin Cara arguing with him. This old screwy ref needs to start doing his job. As he hits the sit-out blockbuster onto Eggman. This egg's gotta be nearly cracked by this point. Oh, the ref found the chair. Sin Cara going up to the top rope. Better look out for all those dudes behind him, except for Cobra, who can't really reach. No, he saw Eggman getting ready to roll out of the way. Into the pin out of nowhere for some reason. One, two... Eggman kicks out. Sin Cara was trying to bamboozle him there. Big kick to Eggman. Megatron trying to come up with new sneaky ways to interfere with this match. As Sin Cara now hits the Northern Lights suplex. Oh, Sin Cara running wild. Going to the top rope. This could be his chance once again. For the fourth time in this match. No, never mind. He, he was expecting Eggman to get up. And here comes Megatron again. But this time, Eggman has some time to get up to his feet. 
Can the referee do something about this giant robot? Eggman has him up! And no Sin Cara with the reverse DDT yet again. Stomping down on Eggman's face. Baseball slide drop kick. Sin Cara so exhausted, but he has been pushing everything to his limit here. Eggman now, strong, ready to go. Russian leg sweep to Sin Cara. Big leg drop, that's a big egg coming down. As Robotnik up on the second rope. Oh, and the double elbows. Sin Cara finally looking to be in some trouble here. Big Michinoku driver by Robotnik. Getting to her, don't fucking taunt Eggman, you've been bad. DDT, but I think he's gonna taunt anyway, because I think he just picked up the victory after all the interferences. No, the number one contender still kicks out. Sin Cara, inspired by Gallagher's underdog story, is doing his best to fight evil. Do what Kin Bone couldn't do. Sit out blockbuster by Eggman. He's got Sin Cara up. Shitty Samoan driver down the ropes. I think Sin Cara's done for. One, two, three. And Dr. Robotnik gets the win. But not without much, much interference. Fuck Eggman, New Gallows. Well, not without much interference from evil. Helping their boy Eggman pick up his first win against number one contender, Sin Cara. But regardless of that loss, Sin Cara will still meet Man Ray in the ring at TLC for the World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> I thought Eggman was about to hug the fucking ref. The referee's done. I can't believe the ref didn't get rid of Megatron. After everything that's happened, he's doing the yes shit. Oh my god, what a heel! <laughs> Doctor Robotnik, telling everyone to get down. The crowd's furious, except for that dude. That they still love the yes chant. As we move on here tonight, and now it is time, the moment you've all been waiting for. Cole Phelps' final decision. That's right. He used the information he got from Bray Wyatt. He used all the information he got from Jinder Mahal and Drew McIntyre. And with all of the evidence leading up to this point, Cole Phelps guarantees that he knows who kidnapped Heath Slater. And unfortunately, he says it's not very good news. But without a doubt, tonight we are going to find out who is responsible for Heath Slater's kidnapping according to all the evidence. Cole Phelps says this is a big deal. He is going to... He's going to call forth this person tonight. But he says he will not be able to deal with this person. He is not ready to deal with this individual until TLC. Where he will punish them for what they've done. To Heath Slater. Don't forget to use hashtag bring him home to talk about Heath Slater's kidnapping here tonight. And let's hear from Detec Detective Cole Phelps, Super Cop. You know this guy came prepared. Let's With a solemn grin on his face. Walking like a man who knows he has to deliver the worst news in the world. playing excited here because he knows he's got the culprit finally I would have thought my accomplishments would speak for themselves and that they would be unassailable they are but I guess I should have realized that people would at least try to tear them down I guess I got beef with a certain superstar look I don't know why either I'm as confused as you are but hey Let's give him a chance to come out here and air his grievances. What do you think, WWE Universe? 
Should we hear from the man who kidnapped Heath Slater? I've learned a lot since we first met, and I'd love to show him firsthand how much I've grown. Tonight, it's time for the student to take his place as the master. Tonight, I'd like to have a match with my friend and mentor, The Undertaker. Oh no, of course! Who can teleport to kidnap Heath Slater, The Undertaker? Who would have reason to take people out, The Undertaker? He kills people all the time, just to make them rest in peace. And of course, who trained Cole Phelps? None other than the American badass. It's all come together. The Undertaker took away Heath Slater. And now I think I'm starting to realize why Cole Phelps wasn't looking forward to this news. Not only is The Undertaker his mentor, but I think we all know what happens to people who get taken away by The Undertaker. It makes me smile when a promo makes sense. So I think, I think we all know what Cole Phelps was alluding to. I don't think there's any Heath Slater for us to bring home. I think Heath Slater is gone. And I think it was The Undertaker that got rid of him. The only thing we can hope now is for Cole Phelps to get justice for Heath Slater. To take out the man who finished him off. Who made him rest in peace. These two staring down now. They know what each other knows. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I learned a long time ago that the only way to get attention around here is to just take it. Just like I took Heath Slater. It's nothing personal, but I've got something on my mind that I need to deal with right now. He didn't say that he took Heath Slater. I added that for fun. He did not canonically say that. Hey everybody, look who's decided to grace us with his presence. This guy! Let's all give it up for the High and Mighty One. He's clearly here to say something important. There's no way this isn't going to be a complete waste of everyone's time. Let's hear it. You absolutely sicken me. Superstars like you are ruining the WWE and the legacy of this industry. I appreciate the history of our business, but you spit in its face. You're a parasite that's slowly ruining this company. And it's up to me to stop you before you bleed this place dry. You can see the look of confusion on Cole Phelps' face. Maybe Undertaker thought Heath Slater was a parasite too and got rid of him. The city brings the best out of people. Look at you. You actually got the grapefruits to come be out here right now, not just take your title and run off. Look, I applaud you. Bet most of you forgot he was Thorne's super sweet champion, huh? Really, give it up for him, W Universe. He's making things fun. Ain't he? Giving us a nice multi-month storyline. You've managed to avoid any comeuppance for your actions for too long. So when will you finally admit that you've got absolutely no testicular fortitude and don't deserve what you've been handed here? Wait a minute! Is Undertaker accusing Cole Phelps of kidnapping Heath Slater? Oh shit, he gave up the real reason why Heath Slater got kidnapped. Did, he, did Undertaker just turn this around on Cole Phelps? Cole Phelps looks very uncomfortable. The universe knows I'm never one to back down from a fight. I'll fight anyone, anywhere, at any time. And that includes you. Listen to this crowd. They want to see me kick your ass right now. Cole, Cole Phelps diverting the turnaround from Undertaker. You're all witnesses to this. You call yourself a superstar, but all I see is a steaming pile of crap. Superstars fight. I fight. I'm a superstar. You're a disgrace to the name and what we do. You don't deserve to stand in this ring. All you're doing is stepping on our legacy. If you haven't realized it already, you've put this entire arena to sleep with your boring comments. The WWE Universe deserves better than this. Thankfully, they have me, the most exciting, entertaining, talented superstar of our generation. And I plan on entertaining them by beating the hell out of you. I don't remember. When did Cole Phelps get such an ego here? I mean, the crowd's been saying that, but when did, he, when did he start thinking that of himself? 
I've already seen the future. And it's me standing tall in victory with my arms raised high and the crowd cheering. It doesn't take magical powers to see that. Just ask anyone here in the crowd. Everyone knows I'll win. You have your head too far up your own butt to see something that's as clear as day. I'll see you soon, though. Um, Cole getting a little arrogant there. Cole Phelps calling out The Undertaker. An interesting interaction. I, I don't know what to make of that. Other than we're going to see them face off for sure at TLC. But I think regardless of what just happened here, I think we all know that Heath Slater is gone for good. He's not coming back. After everything that's happened, he's just gone. All will be revealed who really killed Nat kidnapped who really kidnapped Phelps and TLC, I think you mean he's Slater. Either way, it is time now to get into our main event. The recognized character, Rick Martell, going one on one against Curtis Axel. Axel, along with Darren Young, will face Rick Martell in a triple threat. TLC match for the recognized character championship at TLC. What a fucking show this has been. This has been the best Friday night fights that has ever happened in history. As we wait patiently now, let's get some tail of the tapes before our main event here. Let's see, where is everyone at? Rick Martell, 3-1, has been the recognized character champion for two weeks now. Uh, that's not true, it's been... No, it's been... Yeah, it's been two weeks. This would be week number three. Uh, Curtis Axel, former world heavyweight champion, held it for two weeks himself. Two and two on Curtis Axel. Three and one on Rick Martell. Let's get into this main event before they head into their title match at TLC. Course. Here comes Mr. Better Than Perfect Curtis Axel. Making his way to the ring. Axel, of course, been in a heated rivalry with Darren Young for the last few months that Rick Martell inserted himself into when he won that recognized character championship from Darren Young at a uh, Whatever the fuck the lot money in the bank. Curtis Axel still going after that title. Interfering with Darren Young and Rick Martell's rematch. And really just attacking Darren Young backstage to prevent that rematch from happening. And then last week, as we all saw, Darren Young was scheduled to have a match against Captain Falcon. Curtis Axel he assaulted Captain Falcon, had him sent to a hospital before jumping Darren Young. Curtis Axel now waiting. The recognized character champion to make his way down here to the ring. And there he is. The model. Rick Martell, the recognized character champion. Remember when I thought that said propane and he was just spraying propane everywhere? Well, he canonically is still spraying propane. 
What's that smell? That Michael is Bring Martel trying to poison the teenagers in the audience by shooting propane at them. Trying to get them all sick and nasty. Bring Martel feeling pretty good about having that recognized character championship around his waist. And he is ready to defend it at TLC. Oh, he's just... He's, he's, got, he's lighting up the ring. Someone better not light a cigarette in the gym. Look at him, he loves it. Here we go, Curtis Axel versus Rick Martel. Now underway. And right at the gate, drop toe hold from Rick Martel to Curtis Axel. As we see a big punch from the model and current reigning champion just sending Axel in that turnbuckle. Axel in trouble here. Spinning him around. Look at that body slam. Axel, I think, caught maybe a bit off guard. You know, they call Rick Martel the ultimate jobber. But he's 3-1. and one. His literal only loss was to Heath Slater. So I think we may have to start thinking about not calling him the ultimate jobber anymore. He's a champion who's 3-1. to one. Off the top rope for the elbow drop. But Curtis Axel able to reverse. As he now sends Axel into the ropes. Fighting back, Axel now sending Martel to the ropes. Drop kick connects to the head of Rick Martel. As he has him up, right hook from behind with the back body suplex. Big stomp there from Axel. Nice little elbow drop. Dunks is taking a big ol' heckin' nap. He has been worn out from the high tension of the rest of this show. Big neck bendy there. As what the fuck? What is this? It's Captain Falcon! Captain Falcon coming out! The man Curtis Axel attacked! He's now being he's distracting Curtis Axel! Here comes Rick Martel from behind! Oh, and Curtis Axel saw it coming. And now Rick Martel fighting back. Oh, an atomic drop! Captain Falcon screwing Curtis Axel here, distracting him. Getting payback for what Axel did to him last week. As Rick Martel is going to take advantage of that opportunity. Oh, breaking the eyes it looked like. Picks Axel up, but Axel now reversing with the DDT. Remember last time Martel bossed and crap Falcon in the hospital. That's right. It's probably why Captain Falcon's not sticking around to help anymore. He screwed Curtis Axel, but he's not going to carry Rick Martel to victory. His Axel now goes up to the second rope. And oh my god, spinning uppercut to Rick Martel. Axel now slamming the champion's head into the mat repeatedly. Getting Martel up to his feet very slowly. Now big ol' nope. Martel punching him, not gonna let that suplex happen. Has Axel up. What the fuck is this? Oh, bouncing him off the turnbuckle and throwing Axel aside. As Martel. I thought I was about to say, Martel doesn't do springboards. Rolling Axel over now. Oh, trying to hyperextend Curtis Axel's leg. Oh, the big buff stance there by Rick Martel. Stomp to Curtis Axel. As Axel rakes the eyes. Corey, tell me, just how much gets him up. Your bouncing off that turnbuck again and just throwing him. Aside now into the pin. One. No. Rick Martel kicking out. As we see Curtis Axel bending Martel's head. What, you never see a springboard Boston Crab by Martel? I fucking wish I could. Martel be getting a world title shot if he hit a springboard Boston Crab. That one. Bring back creative finisher for 2K19, please. Snapmare by Rick Martel. I'm not saying that springboard Boston Crab would be an option in creative finisher. I'm just throwing that out there that I want to back. Oh, running crossbody. 
putting all of that model weight onto Curtis Axel. Now one. No, Curtis Axel kicking out at one. Rick Martel can't believe it. He had the power of God and propane on his side. Axel getting back up to his feet, punching Rick Martel in the gut. Martel fight. Oh, it's, it's just a fist fight at this point. <coughs> As Martel picks him up. No, reverse DDT by Mr. Perfect Son. Big knee to Rick Martel. Nice little stomp there. Has Rick Martel up. Oh, Mag McGillicutter. No, a rude awakening. Shades of Rick Martel's past. Curtis Axel now back up to his feet. And Rick Martel sweeping out his leg. Taking advantage of the situation. Did they ever call him the perfect son? I don't believe so. Oh my god! That just fucking blew out Rick Martel's knee. Something he does not want to do two nights before a TLC match for his title. Curtis Axel has him up. Big body slam. Axel now. It's a, oh my god, a bit of an, a running McGilla cutter, I think, as Martel now, I think trying to leave the ring, trying to escape from Curtis Axel, who catches him off guard, running neck breaker, into a big elbow on the outside, Axel now has the champ up to his feet, from behind, up top, gut buster, <coughs> Curtis Axel just stomping away at the champ. Maybe he doesn't even want to win. Maybe he just decided he just wants to hurt him on the outside. What a knee! If Axel can just brutalize Rick Martel on the outside, hospitalize him, he'd only have to worry about Darren Young at TLC. Axel now dragging him. Center of the ring, into the pin. One, two. Oh, but Martel kicks out. Curtis Axel in absolute shock. Big stomp. And Axel now ready to show him why they call him better than perfect. McGill. No! Rick Martel reverses the McGillic Cutter. Into a big suplex to Curtis Axel. Rick Martel going up top again. I think this is a bad idea. From the top rope. Oh! Lands that big knee drop. Into the pin. One. He hit him with the propane. And it finished Curtis Axel off. Rick Martel is now 4-1. and one, And I think we officially can't call him the ultimate jobber anymore. Curtis Axel now 2-3. and three. Not looking so good. Heading into TLC this in-game Sunday. The fuck is Rick Martel? There he is. Four and one. Jesus. That one. The propane smell is too much. Look at that. What is this? A. What is this camera shot? What cameraman is this? Did someone just send us their like fucking iPhone footage and we decided to use it? What is happening? What is this? And there it is, the Propane! Brand new finisher from Rick Martel. As he defeats Curtis Axel here tonight. Okay, I'm going to call Venom the ultimate jobber now. He is 0-1. Sorry, British Bulldog is now the ultimate jobber? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for TLC, where you will see such great matches as Snorlax versus somebody in a tables match. I don't really know who. I haven't decided that yet. Ronda, not Ronda Rousey, I'm sorry. Jacqueline versus Naomi for the Broken Hearts Championship in a chairs match. The Colognes versus the Orphan Cripplers for the Tag Team Championships in a ladder match. Thorn's Super Sweet Championship title will be on the line. 
I don't know what kind of match it is. I don't know who's going to be in it other than Undertaker, who holds the title. But then, later on in the night, Undertaker has to face Cole Phelps, who's going to try and arrest him. Make him pay for the kidnapping and murder of Heath Slater. Then we will see a triple threat TLC match between Darren Young, Curtis Axel, and the champion Rick Martell. And in our main event, Man Ray will put his WWE World Heavyweight Championship on the line against Sing Car... Excuse me? Yes? Yeah? What, what, what do you mean it expired? I, f I fucking need it. Deported! I need him for... Uh, uh, Man Ray versus Sin Cara this Sunday. So be sure to stay tuned. Alright. Storytelling aside, normally I drop a fucking... Oh, what's gonna happen twist like that in the, in the stream? But of course, we I'm just going to ignore it now. Because normally I would kill the stream there, so you just have to sit on that. So I'm just going to not address that. Hang on a second. I'm just not going to address that. You're going to find out at TLC. Alright. Normally I would just kill the stream there, but I'm not. Because we talked about doing an hour of Super Mario Odyssey. That was before Friday Night Fights went an hour and 20 minutes long. That is right. This Friday Night Fights went an hour and 20 minutes. So I'm going to leave it up to you in chat if you would like to see some Super Mario Odyssey or if you would like us to call it a night and do some Super Mario Odyssey when we haven't done nearly three hours of universe. I'll, I'll sit here and I will consider the opportunities. I for one could go either way. I'm leaning towards not really wanting to, but I'm not against. Like I'm not gonna be like, oh fuck Mario Odyssey, fucking gentleman hogging the spotlight. I know, right? Nah, I'm gonna that that fucking that two on one handicap match went way too goddamn long. Yeah, let me tell you right now. Let me tell you. And I was doing a stream after not uh, after NXT, so no. All right, cool. That works for me. But hey, you guys, you guys, you like Rick Martel's face? Uh, get ready for the YouTube vod because that fucking that that Rick Martel face. That's gonna that's gonna be your thumbnail. All right, thanks for coming out. Enjoy the and the Sin Cara match went on too long. It did, but at least there was a story in that one. The the, the handicap match was just ridiculous. All right, enjoy the NL stream. I'm going to go eat food, do my nightly exercise and whatnot. Uh, see you later. Thanks for coming out.